Hi everyone, it's Laura Binding here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this double-sided pendant. So I'm just going to show you up nice and close. You can see to one side we've got this woven detail going across with a couple of little added details just here, some little sparkling spinel. But then you turn the piece over and we have this design on the back. So it's a reversible pendant and I'm going to show you how we can create this. So the materials we're going to be using today are going to be these beautiful moss agate bars. They are top drilled, as you can see they are graduated in size. And I'm going to be using some 0.4 gold coloured, silver plated coloured wire. And I'm going to be using some 0.8 gold coloured, silver plated wire as well. So the tools that we'll be using today are going to be your round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, some flush cutters. These are optional but I find them really helpful and they are my bail making pliers. So I have my gemstone ready and I've cut two lengths of my 0.8 gauge wire around about 50 centimeters. What I want to do is I'm actually going to create a bale for this pendant. So this bale is going to be created and we're going to take the 0.4 wire through the drill hole to stabilize it because this frame on its own isn't going to be enough to make sure that this gemstone doesn't go anywhere. So we do use the drill hole but it's just blended in with the design. As you can see here the bale itself is independent and created using this wire. Now all of this decoration on both sides is going to be done with these two wires here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut my gemstone from the strand. I've cut two lengths of my 0.8 gauge wire and it's about 50 centimeters. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take some 0.4 wire. Again, it doesn't need to be a long length, just probably about a meter, just a comfortable length to work with. And I actually want to start doing a weave that's going to keep these wires nice and close together. So what I'm going to do is start my weave in the middle, just slightly off the middle, so that I can create a woven section right in the middle. That will become the bale. That will then give me excess wires on either side to create the two-sided pendant. So I'm going to show you on some contrasting colours. So I've got some um, blue wire here which would represent the 0.8 and then I've got my gold wire here so hopefully you'll be able to see. Also I'm going to just use some short pieces just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing um, because it's difficult to show you up close but with the right lengths of wire. So hopefully this will make sense. Okay so what I'm going to do is take my 0.4 take my first piece of wire and wrap it one, two, three times. Now when you're doing this on the actual 0.8 gauge wire, you're going to want to do this. If I show you this shorter piece, you're still going to want to do it in about the same place. You want your weave to go across the middle of those wires, okay? Probably going to be doing about four inches of weaving. So my wire is now secured to my point. Eight. I'm then taking my second piece of wire and placing that just on top, making sure the ends are equal. And then I'm just going to kick out the ends, just so that I'm creating almost like a little channel. Now I don't want a gap, I just want to be able to bring the wire easily in between those wires. So, holding this all nice and steady, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to talk you through a rotation. So. So I'm going to bring that wire all the way across the front of both those 0.8 gauge wires. For easiness I'm going to call them the base wires. I'm now going to take that wire and bring it around and into the middle of those wires back. Okay, that wire then goes back up and around that top wire and all the way down the back of those two wires. It's now going to come up and over and into the middle. So what you'll end up with is a line and then two little lines, a bit like a percentage um, mark. So then what I'm going to do now is, again, my wire's back at the start point. So across the front, around and into the middle, all the way up and over, and then down across the back. Up and over into the middle, and then back down to the bottom. Effectively, you're wrapping the top and bottom wire. 
So what you're doing is going across and wrapping that top wire down the back and wrapping that bottom wire. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done a nice section on my gold wire. So just so you can see, I've got the ends here and it's just that centre section. So I've probably done about three inches here. And what I'm going to do now is take my bail making pliers and I want to create my bail. So again, which side you decide to do is up to you, bearing in mind the balance that you need for the size of the bale against the gemstone. So I think I'm going to just go for the slightly smaller side, and I'm going to take my pliers into the middle of that weave, and I'm going to roll it around once, and then just open up my pliers, reposition them, and then roll it around again. So you can see I've got that double bale. Okay. that's my bail ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is create a bit of a twist but in a nice way because I don't want to add any height. Again I'll go back to the pendant and show you. I need them to twist around each other but I don't want it to look bulky. Okay so I need it to look quite fluid. So I'm going to take this section here and I'm just going to gently push that so it can go there and then I want this to go here. But I take a pair of wires, they're going to sort of help decorate and stabilise both sides of the gemstone. So this is what we're looking at right now. Now I've ran out of wire really, I don't really see any point working with that. So what I'm going to do is just take that, trim it nice and close. And just take my pliers, make sure it's gone nice and flat and there's no sharp edges. So what I'm going to do now, before I add my next bit of weaving wire, is I'm just going to take my gemstone. Now first of all we need to see where the drill hole is because some have them a little bit higher, some a little bit lower. So this one is just here. i just show you. It's just quite high up so I don't need to do a lot of weaving before I hit the point where I can use the drill hole. So Placing it against my bale, I can start to get an idea of how it's going to look. Now, I want this to look central, so I'm going to place that so it just goes slightly over the top. That's absolutely fine. Bear in mind, everyone's is going to be a little bit different. Your wires will sit differently. It doesn't matter. It's just about having that confidence to um, have a go and see what happens. So now that I'm happy with where that's going to be sitting, I'm going to go ahead, take a new piece of my point four wire and do some more weaving. So it's really easy to get carried away with this weave. So this is one of those designs that you do have to keep checking and referencing because you don't want to do too much, otherwise you will end up having to undo some. So I'm just getting rid of that tail again of the point four. All right. Um, and I have done about an inch here. Make sure you've got the drill hole end where it needs to be. And I'm just placing this and I want this to go all the way around so you can see it's really easy to mould it, but make sure that that bale stays central, it's quite key. So when I place that here, I can place my wires here and I can see, if I bring that up, that point 0.4 is pretty much exactly where I want it to go. Probably need to do about two more rotations. So what I'm going to do now is just pop my stone onto the point four drop it into place in that sort of setting we've already made so if you see that's now sitting so it's the wires going for the drill hole but you won't see that because it's going to be blended in and then what I'm going to do because you won't be able to um, get the wire back through that drill hole we'll only go through once so I'm just making sure that the wire is on the right side of the uh, weave so I've just threaded that in and then again because of the white uh, because of the weave that we've done this will blend in so what I'm doing is just taking that point four and I'm just going to um, oops so what I'm doing is I'm just taking this point four and I'm just popping it around that frame a couple of times so I'm just wrapping it and it will blend into the weave so it's fine so that that will hold. 
bearing in mind that we're going to be doing a lot of weaving down the front and back so it's going to be held and supported by those wires but you do need that point four to attach it so that wire is on the outside now and again I'm going to come in with my flush cutters and just trim that take my chain nose pliers and just make sure there's no sharp edges and that that wire is nice and flattened and blended into that weave so because I want this pendant to be double sided um, and even if you don't want it to be double sided you do want it to look nice from the back as well so what I'm going to do is I need to bring these wires back down towards the front now to join these wires so to do that I'm going to again take some more 0.4 wire and do the exact same weave that we've already done until I can bring it down to meet up with these two wires here okay so I've gone ahead and added that little section of weaving just there and now what I'm going to do is connect these four wires together okay the pattern stays the same but we're just going to kind of switch it to add a little figure of eight in the middle so I've done a rotation on the top ones here these are still separated at the moment so what I'm going to do now is pick up the same pattern on the bottom two so my wire is in the middle so it's going to come into the middle and then it's just going to pick up that pattern so it's going to go around that top wire and across the two wires around that bottom wire and then behind them both up and around so it's just the exact same rotation the wire is now in the gap between the two sets of wires and it's just going to come over the top wire here and pick that rotation up okay, and I just want to bring that around to the front as soon as those and keep checking as well the bail make sure everything's staying as it is and it hasn't moved um, and as soon as you've gotten to a point where you feel ready to add some of the spinel I did forget to mention at the beginning actually that we'd be using spinel uh, microfaceted gemstones so what I want to do is I need to be able to add them when the wire can go across straight across this middle channel section here so at the moment it's in the middle so I'm going to just switch that very quickly so now instead of going in the middle I'm actually just going to go straight down across the back oops My wire is now going to go straight across those wires, which is the perfect time to add the gemstones. So I'm taking a couple of the spinels, I'm just going to pop one on. So these do need to be added on singly. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I actually ended up adding five. So what I'm going to do now is continue back with the same weave that we did initially up here, so that the wire does go into the middle. And I don't want that gap to get too wide. But I'm going to continue that weaving with all four wires. Now what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm separating the ends of the wire so I can work out which ones are which. But I still need these parts of the wires to be close together. So by doing this I can work out one, two, three, four. I can I can see which ones are which. So I can then just do a little bit of weaving. So into the middle, over to the other side. And we're just going to do a little bit of this to come to the back of the design or the other side should I say so while I'm doing this I can then fold that around so I can start to see how it's going to look it also helps me um, control the wires a little bit so you can see that we're looking like that and then what we're going to do is that woven section is going to come across the back to give a bit of a detail on the other side of the pendant Okay, so you can see here that I've carried on until I'm happy with um, where the, the weave is finishing. So what's going to happen is these bottom wires here are going to become the finish now on this side. And then this pair here is going to go across, back across the front. So what I've done is I've continued that weave and then I just did a tiny little section of the same weave on the bottom wires. And I'm just going to bring that into a bit of a, a swirl. And then I'm going to take the ends and I've just snipped that and I've left about half of a centimetre of plain wire. I'm then going to come in with some chain nose pliers, probably as opposed to round, just because I can get a better grip. Splitting them out slightly, I just need to get that wire and just 
twist that in on itself and then do the same with this one here make sure that's nice and tucked in so again you'll see there are no sharp edges so you can see and then what I'm going to do is pick up the same weave again so you can see it's very repetitive um, and then that weave is going to come around to here and split these wires out and add a few more gemstones in the exact same way as we have here so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you in a moment so you can see I've just picked that weave up here brought it around added some more gemstones on here and now I'm back to the point where the wire is going to start to go around again one thing you do need to be quite careful of is making sure that you can't see the detailing on either side so if I show you again on the main piece so you see that detailing there but you don't realize that there's a back decoration and likewise when you turn that piece over you don't see the gemstones and the decorations on that side so you do need to make sure that it doesn't come out and interfere with that design so what I'm doing now just to show you quickly is I'm just doing a bit of an open weave a figure of eight weave so I'm going around once and then into the middle so it's fine to lift it away from the gemstone so around once over and into the middle around once and into the middle once and into the middle around once and then back over and into the middle so it's just a nice figure of eight weave and what I want to do is bring it around to here and I am actually going to stitch this to this again it's just stabilizing and securing all of your work so I'm at that point where I want to just stitch this into here if I can so I want to try to lift that little section up and then bring this point four wire through can you see that's just come through straight through the middle of the sort of where those wires were twisted and then just pull that and then that will just again lock all that together and then I'm just going to take these wires and when I'm happy because obviously I don't want to get to the bottom of the gemstone and run out of room so I can just place this how I want it to go and then all I'm going to do is take the wire around the top one okay I'm going to trim the bottom wire about a centimeter take my round nose pliers because I've got a little bit more room here and just bring that into a little bit of a swirl so I'm just going to coil the last little section of this only about a centimeter if that I'm going to keep that wire attached and leaving about half of a centimeter again of plain wire bring that around so you can tuck that in and then if you feel you needed to you could just again stitch that last coil to together so just bringing that in bring that around and snip there you have your finished pendant to see it from that side and from that side and you have a two-sided pendant obviously make sure you go over and make sure there's no sharp edges if you've had to add in a few times i hope you like this project and i look forward to seeing your makes